the machine is a Skyjack SJ4626. 46 inches wide and 26 foot to the platform. Those who intend to use any machine with characteristics of weight, height, width, length or complexity which differ significantly to the training they have received should ensure that they receive a familiarisation to cover the differences. It is the employer's responsibility to ensure that all operators using equipment are adequately trained and familiarised to comply with current health and safety legislation. Machine specific familiarisation should follow on from basic training and cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, features of the specific model, control functions, safety devices and emergency lowering procedures. All of the above are to be found in the operator's manual supplied with the machine. The operator's manual is located in the platform in the black box. Carry out a full check ensuring that the general structure, pins and retainers are in good condition. The type of wheel on the machine is a solid non-marking tyre. Ensure that the wheel is in good condition and secured correctly. The handrails and gates on the machine are able to be folded down. Ensure that the pins are correctly located and the guardrails are fully installed. Check hydraulic tank to ensure that the level is at the correct level. Look for any leaks or any damaged hydraulic hoses. The battery isolator is located at the rear of the machine. Before checking batteries, ensure that the battery isolator switch is turned off and that you are wearing your PPE or personal protective equipment. Decals are located around the machine. Familiarise yourself with the different decals, ensuring that you understand items such as safe working load, wind speeds, floor loadings, crushing points. The machine is equipped with a load sensing system. This is a safety device that will prevent any normal movement of the platform after the rated load is reached and exceeded. When 90% of the rated load is reached, the red power indicate light on the platform control console will flash. When the rated load is reached, an audible alarm sounds for approximately 2 seconds, 5 times per minute. When the rated load is exceeded, the flashing light and audible alarm continue and all electrical controlled aerial platform movement functions stop. To resume normal operation, remove the overload from the platform. Base Control Console This console is located at the rear of the base. It contains the following controls. Lower, Neutral and Raise Switch. Off, Platform and Base Key Switch. Emergency Stop Button. If you need to winch or tow the machine, refer to the operator's manual on how to carry out this safely. The freewheeling valve is located at the front and or the rear of the aerial platform, depending on your model. Refer to the operating manual on how to release the freewheeling valve. The battery charger is located at the rear of the base or inside the battery tray. Your machine has a maintenance support strut. This maintenance support strut is a safety mechanism designed to support the scissor assembly. When properly positioned, it can support the scissor lift and the empty platform when carrying out any maintenance or inspection inside the scissor pack. The upper platform control console contains a lift drive steer enable trigger switch, a lift drive steer controller, an emergency stop button, operation light, horn push button, incline drive, lift and drive switch. Function tests. These are designed to discover any malfunctions before putting the MUP into service. You must follow the step-by-step -step instructions to test all MUP functions. If you do find a fault, isolate, tag and report the machine. 
do not attempt any repairs to the machine. To test the main power disconnect switch, at the rear of the base, turn the main power disconnect switch to the off position. All aerial platform functions should not operate. To test the base emergency stop, push in the emergency stop button and attempt to raise or lower the platform. No functions should operate. Pull out the base emergency stop button. Select the base position and attempt to raise the platform. The platform should now raise and lower. Functions should be normal. Your machine is equipped with pothole devices. To test the pothole sensor, dismount from the platform using the ladder and place a block approximately 3.75 centimeters under the hydraulic electrical tray. Climb back into the platform using the ladder and raise the platform until approximately a height of two meters is reached and attempt to drive forward or reverse. The aerial platform should not move forward or backwards. To test the emergency lowering, raise the platform from the ground controls. Locate holding valve manual override control at the base of each lift cylinder. Depress and turn counterclockwise. If necessary, use the access rod that is located on the base of the aerial platform to reach the upper cylinder. On the hydraulic electrical tray, pull out and hold the emergency lowering valve to fully lower the platform. To restore normal operation, depress and turn the holding valve manual override control clockwise. To test the platform control console, locate the base control console and pull out the emergency stop. Select the key switch to the upper platform position. Climb into the platform and close the gate securely. To test the platform emergency stop, push in the emergency stop button and attempt to activate any platform function. All selected platform functions should not operate. To test the enable trigger switch, pull out the emergency stop button. Without activating the trigger, attempt to activate each platform function. All platform functions should not operate. To test the steering, put the drive select switch into incline drive or level drive. Hold the enable trigger switch. Press the rocker switch on top of the controller to the left and to the right. The steer wheels should turn to the left and the right. To test the driving of the machine, ensure the intended path of the machine is clear. Activate and hold the trigger enable switch and slowly move the control handle in a forwards direction until the mute begins to move. Return the handle to the center position. This should allow the machine to drive forward and come to a stop. If the aerial platform does not stop or if the aerial platform pulls to one side while stopping, do not operate until the brake adjustments have been checked out. Test platform raising and lowering. Be aware of overhead obstructions or other possible hazards when lifting. Select lift position, activate and hold the enable trigger and push the control handle and raise the platform to an approximate height of 0.5 of a meter. The platform should raise smoothly. Pull control handle backwards and lower the platform fully. Platform should lower. To test the lowering warning, raise the platform until approximately a height of three to four meters is reached. Then attempt to fully lower the platform. The platform should stop lowering at a height of 2.5 meters and an alarm should sound. Release the control handle, then activate the control handle to lower the machine to the ground. Test the horn by holding and pushing the horn button. Testing elevated drive speed. Ensure the area around the machine is clear of any hazards or pedestrians. Raise the platform two meters and drive forwards and backwards. The platform should move slower than when it was in the stowed position. The machine has two drive speeds, level drive or incline drive. Select level drive when traveling on flat surfaces. Your machine is equipped with a manual extension platform. To extend or retract manual extension platforms, remove retaining locking pins and push or pull the extension platform using the push bars or sliding handrails to one of four or five desired locking positions. Upon extension or retraction, reinsert locking pins 
either side of the upright bar to prevent any accidental movement. When folding down the guardrail system, this reduces the height of the retracted aerial platform for manoeuvring through doorways and low hazards. Ensure when folding down guardrails, locking pins are retained and locked in place to ensure unnecessary movement. If you need to winch or tow the machine, refer to the operator's manual on how to carry out this safely.